Hey guys, welcome back to my Python series. And let's go ahead and keep the Python train rolling right along. In this video, I'm going to show you some additional data types. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So in previous videos, I've showed you up to this point a few data types such as decimal, float, and string. So you do know already that the type function allows you to see what type something is. So obviously a number is an integer. If it's a decimal, it's a float. And if it's just a bunch of random characters, we could see that it's a string. So those are three data types that we've already gone over. And in the previous video, I showed you how to utilize variables so we could actually store any of those different objects into a variable. So we definitely have some uh, tools that we can play around with, though we don't have a well-rounded tool set just yet that will allow us to develop software, but that's coming. And in this video, the two data types I wanna show you are lists and dictionaries. Now, obviously there's more data types than just these, there's actually quite a few, but uh, it's very important to understand dictionaries and lists and know the differences between them. So let's go ahead and get started. So what I'm gonna do right now is create a list and I'm going to call it turtles and I'm gonna go ahead and type this out and then I will explain what it's actually doing. So basically we could see right here that I created a list. I called the list turtles, as you can see the name and then equal right here. And then I set it equal to these four names, the four names of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. But you can see that I did things a little bit differently here actually. I have separate strings here that are separated by commas. Each string is created with, with uh, single quotes. I actually have four strings right here. So if I print turtles, which I just refer to the name of the list and press enter, you can see that it's actually printing it in list format. Now I didn't actually need to create a list just to store four names. I mean, if I go here and I put double quotes, as you can see in this example, and make turtles equal to that, it's pretty much the same thing, that's just a string. I could have even just eliminated the brackets and just made it equal to this right here. And if I print it, we can see I get very similar output, but what lists allow you to do is refer to each component of the list, you know, basically individually. So I could even add like the names of villains, for example, from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and I could simply add those there and keep adding to a list and I can re remove an item from a list. So how do we actually do that? So I'll go ahead and close and clear my screen here. And let's go ahead and see some examples of that. So before we go to the next section, let me go ahead and correct the actual uh, list to make sure that it is of type list because right now we can see that it's a string. That's not what we want. So let's convert it back to a list by removing the double quotes. So here it is again. This is basically the command where I am creating a list. I'll press enter and just to make sure that I did it correctly, we can see now that it is a type of list. So let's go ahead and clear the screen and I'll show you some examples of why lists are something you definitely want to memorize and make use of. Now I mentioned that I can refer to any individual item of the list and not have to print the entire thing. Now obviously if I print the whole list, I get everything. But what if I only want the first thing? So here's what I can do. I'm gonna go ahead and recall the print statement, but what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to add some brackets right here and I'm gonna put one. So I have the name of the list and then in brackets one. So do you know what's gonna happen? Which Ninja Turtle is actually going to be printed? I'll press enter. And if you guessed Raphael, you are correct. And if you don't already know why that is, it's because counting with lists starts at zero. So one is actually the uh, second item. So we have four items. So what happens if I wanna print the fourth one? Well, we actually get an exception because there is no fourth item. Well, there is, but it starts at zero. So the last item is actually three. And if I want to print the first one, I actually have to use zero as you can see right here. So just to recap, I have this list and it has these four names right here. So if I wanted to go ahead and remove an item from that list, how would I go about doing that? So 
what I can do is I can actually just use the pop method. So I could do turtles or whatever the name of your list actually is, dot pop. And in the little parentheses here, I could just type the index number. So I'll just type one and press enter. And it's gonna tell me the name of the item that was removed. So if I print the list again, you see that we're actually missing someone from the list. So Raphael is gone. And what I can do is also just remove another item. So I'll just remove zero to get Michelangelo out of there. And then we actually uh, have, now we're down to two. So I guess Shredder defeated two of the Ninja Turtles and we have two left. Actually, um, I'm gonna go ahead and reset this back to what it was before. And now we know how to remove an item from a list. So what exactly, so how exactly do we add something to a list? So what we can do is do turtles or whatever the name is of your list. And we could do dot append. Then in parentheses and quotes, we can type in another name. So I'll type splinter, press enter. And now if I print turtles, assuming I spell it correctly, we could see that now Splinter is included in the cast here, so we added an additional item. So we could do, we're gonna do more advanced list things later on in the series, but I just wanted to make sure you understand why lists are important and even why you should care about that. And really quickly, I wanna show you another data type, which is called a dictionary. Now this is actually very, very similar and what I'm gonna do is type the command out to create a dictionary, and then I'll explain what I'm typing, and then I'll also explain the difference. All right, so I went ahead and typed out a dictionary. Now, it is a little long because it wraps over to the next line there, but I think you could see exactly what it shows. And again, I'm creating a dictionary named Turtles, kind of similar to how I created a list called Turtles, but this time, you could probably see the difference right away. In the, in the past, in the list, I just had the names. But here I have what looks like a key value pair. So I have a list of each Ninja Turtle, but I also have their personality matched. So Michelangelo, party dude, Leonardo is the leader, Donatello is the geek, and so on. So we actually have a relationship. So we can refer to this instance by, or each instance by name, and then also read back the personality. Now, of course, you can also have a list of names and ages, or employees and employee numbers, and so on. Um, your creativity is the only limitation here, but basically the takeaway is that a dictionary allows you to have a value and its definition. And basically what I did is just create that. So if I do type against turtles now, we can see that it is of class dictionary. So it's a diction, it's of an object from the class dictionary. Now, object-oriented programming and classes are coming later, so we're not gonna worry too much about that, but the takeaway right now is that we successfully created a dictionary. So now that we actually have a dictionary, we can print the contents of an item based on its name. So for example, if we wanted to see the personality for Donatello print, what would we do? Well, actually, here's what we would do. So we would execute a command like this. We're going to print the turtles dictionary, which is now a dictionary, and we wanna print Donatello. We wanna know what Donatello equals from that dictionary, which you know in our case is just actually going to be the personality. So if I go ahead and e execute this, it's gonna say geek. If I change this to one of the other names, so Leonardo, press enter, you see that his shows up as leader. So we can actually print the value of an item in the dictionary, which is going to show you the value of creating a dictionary and why it might be something that you would want to use. Now obviously this in particular isn't very useful, but more useful examples will come as we go along. So to delete something from the dictionary, what we can do is use the delete or del command right here, and we're gonna delete from turtles, we're gonna get rid of Michelangelo. I'll press enter, and now if I print the entire dictionary, you can see that Michelangelo is no longer on the list. So if I wanted to add something to the dictionary, what I can do is simply type the name of the dictionary, 
And then I can type the item or the key that I want to add. In this case, I'll add shredder. Let's just say he became a turtle. God knows how, but it happened. And then I'll go ahead and put that in quotes. And then I'll set it equal to mean dude in quotes. Now, if I print the dictionary, we can see that shredder is now there. We removed Michelangelo and now Shredder has been added. So I'm sure you could think of more practical examples. I already mentioned employee numbers, you know, employee name, employee number, or person's name, age, and so on. So dictionaries will, the use case for this will come more into play later as we go along. But for now, I just want you to understand the difference between list and dictionary you should be able to identify a dictionary or a list based on the brackets that are used. So if you recall, we're actually using uh, curly brackets when we uh, go ahead and create a dictionary as you see right here, but with the list, we went ahead and we used normal brackets, which you can see right here. So this was the command that we used to create a list. And then this is the command that we used to create a dictionary. So you can see the difference in how the two are constructed. So just make sure you take a good look at this and you understand all of the differences between the two such that you could point them out. If you were looking at a piece of code or a script or a program that's already written, at this point you should be able to go in and identify lists and identify dictionaries. Now, you can actually, you'll actually see dictionaries and lists created in different ways. So there's going to be exceptions here that I'm not going to get into in this video, but the takeaway is just to understand what the dictionary type is, what the list type is. And at this point, you should memorize that. You should memorize how to create a variable, which we've gone over in the past. You should know the difference between an integer, a float, and a string. So go ahead and practice all of those, um, all those things. And once you feel like you have a good handle on that, you are ready to move on to the next video. Thanks for watching. Thank you so much for watching my video, guys. I really appreciate it. If you wanna help me out, go ahead and check out my sponsor and my cloud server provider, Linode. Linode now features a new and improved dashboard, their cloud manager, that makes it an absolute breeze to set up your own Linux server. They even have Arch Linux, how cool is that? And of course they have all the staples such as CentOS, Debian, Ubuntu, Fedora, and more. And it's very easy to set up a server near you. In fact, Linode currently has nine worldwide data centers with two more set to appear this year in India and Canada. So definitely check them out, guys. I appreciate them as a sponsor. I appreciate you guys as a viewer. So thanks again for watching. Subscribe to my channel. I will have more content coming for you very soon. Stay tuned.